Today starts module three with formal synthesis. Uh, this is a process through which we take a, an abstract CHP representation and we break it down into implementable pieces, which we can then uh, convert into HSC and then production rules for uh, digital logic uh, uh, execution. So the first step in that is handshake expansion and reshuffling. Uh, we will be taking a CHP representation and looking at uh, all the different uh, handshake expansions that can implement that CHP implementation, and then looking at how we can uh, shift from one to the other in order to optimize uh, circuit area, energy, and other things that we want to optimize. And so, so far, we have really only talked about uh, one particular four-phase protocol. Uh, this is the... Uh, you know, active enable and active and passive enab enable protocols that we've been talking about so far. Uh, in this in this protocol, the the sender raises the request rail, the receiver lowers the enable, the sender lowers the request, and the receiver raises the enable. But there are a wide variety of other uh, protocols, four phase protocols that we can use uh, in its place. And so uh, we've got uh, we've also got active. Uh, receive and passive send. So instead of the uh, sender starting the communication action, the receiver can start uh, by raising the enable uh, rail. And so in response, the sender will raise the request rail. Uh, the receiver will then lower the enable rail, and the sender can then lower the request rail. And so this is, in a way, just a rotation of the uh, of the handshake. Um, and you know, if you if you have this handshake in a loop, then uh, really any differences between active and passive sends or active and passive receives are um, pretty nominal overall. There, they um, there isn't much of a difference between them. Uh, and so uh, the other alternative we have is uh, whether or not the uh, response from the uh, receiver is and acknowledge or enable. And this just inverts the sense. Um, so instead of uh, lowering the enable in response to a request from the sender, we raise the acknowledge. Uh, and um, again, this is, in a way, a rotation of the handshake uh, between the sender and receiver. And so we can kind of abstract all of this away. And um, we've got you know three different design decisions here uh, between, you know, that allows us to choose between these eight protocols. We've got send and receive, we've got active and passive, and enable and acknowledge. And send and receive, you already know, it's the direction of token flow. Uh, active and passive determines who starts the communication action, the sender or the receiver. And enable or acknowledge uh, determines the sense of the acknowledgement signal coming back from the receiver. So when we abstract all this away and just look at input and output rails, we end up uh, only really having one protocol. And that is um, the one that you've largely been seeing. We, you know, the active uh, port raises the output rail. Uh, the passive port uh, responds. The active port lowers its output rail and the passive port responds. And so we can take this four phase protocol and divide it up into to uh, two sections, right, in half. And so on the left side, we have the set phase represented by C prime. And on the right side, we have the reset phase represented by C double prime. And these, uh, the set phase and the reset phase, in a way, are mirrors of each other, right? When rather than uh, raising the request in the set phase, we lower the request in the reset phase or bring it back down to neutral rather than valid. And so we can create a kind of two-phase CHP description of our circuit uh, using this C prime and C double prime construction. So the first uh, thing that we have to do is really iron out uh, what each composition operator means uh, in relation to these two-phase CHP uh, communication primitives. Right, and so I've shown uh, our protocols down here on the bottom right. Uh, and we're looking at the set phase primarily, so this, this first half. And all of this, uh, all of the material presented here can be uh, kind of 
uh, better understood in uh, Rajat Manohar's paper here, an analysis of Rishabh Kult handshake expansions. And so when defining these composition operators, we've got about uh, four of them, right? L semi R uh, tells us that we want to do the set phase of L first, followed by the set phase of R. Uh, R semi L is the inverse, so the set phase of R followed by the set phase of L. Uh, L in parallel with R executes both in any order. Um, and then L sync R, uh, which requires them to be executed simultaneously. And so we can define these primitives in terms of their deadlocking behavior. And so we can kind of guess that L semi R should deadlock with R semi L. So if you have two processes, one's communicating and it, it tries to send on L first, and the other is communicating and it tries to receive on R first, they'll, you know, all execution will halt. They won't be able to make forward progress and you'll end up with a deadlock scenario. So same with, uh, R semi L, if it's communicating with L semi R, that system will deadlock. L parallel R doesn't deadlock with anything, right? So uh, if you if L parallel R is communicating with L semi R, uh, then the L uh, synchronization primitive, the L communication action will happen first, followed by the R communication action. Vice versa, if it's communicating with R semi L, then R will happen first, followed by L. Um, so in a way, the environment dictates the, dictates the order in which uh, L and R happen. And finally, we have uh, L sync R. And so that deadlocks with everything but parallel. Right? If we're communicating with uh, R semi L, it'll deadlock. We're communicating with uh, L semi R, it'll deadlock. And if we're communicating with another sync, it'll deadlock. So we can take this concept of deadlocking behavior and kind of figure out uh, what, uh, what this means for different interleavings of those two, of those primitives, right? Of the, of the set phase and the reset phase uh, of L and R, uh, given two different uh, types of channels, right? Passive or active. And so if we look at this first interleaving, we have L, the set phase of L, so receive, uh, so L is passive. We wait for the incoming rail, then we raise the outgoing rail. And then we have the set phase of R, which is also passive. We wait for the incoming rail and set the outgoing rail. And so this is very clearly just a straight representation of do one, then do the other. Then we also have uh, wait on the incoming rails of both. Uh, before raising the outgoing rails of both. And finally, we have wait on the incoming rail of R, raise the outgoing rail of R, wait on the incoming rail of L, raise the outgoing rail of L. So once again, this is just uh, pretty straightforward, do one and then do the other. And so when we have uh, this kind of straightforward, do one and do the other, we can be pretty sure that that's going to be uh, uh, sequential, right? So uh, L semi R for the first one, uh, and the middle one, uh, this is, you know, you, you have to wait for both communication actions on the environment to start before you can make forward progress. And so this will deadlock with any environment other than L parallel R, which makes it a synchronization uh, composition. And so this last one here is just R semi L, which is a mirror of the first one. And so that's for L is passive and R is passive. However, what about for L active, R active, right? So now instead of waiting on the incoming rail first, we raise the outgoing rail first. And so we're, you can think of this as the, as the send in a way. Uh, so our first interleaving is again, do one and then do the other. So raise the outgoing rail, wait for the incoming rail to go high, raise the outgoing rail, wait for the incoming rail to go high. Uh, the second possible interleaving is uh, raise both outgoing rails, then wait for both incoming rails. The third is uh, the inverse of the first, so raise the outgoing rail of R, wait for the incoming rail of R, wait, raise the outgoing rail of L, wait for the incoming rail of L. Uh, and so we've got, you know, that first one is very similar to uh, our previous examples. 
right? We're, we're just doing one and then doing the other. And so this is clearly a, uh, a, a sequence composition operator, so L semi R. Uh, this middle one, we are initializing the communication action on both simultaneously. And only after that do we actually wait. And so this is actually parallel because this won't deadlock with any environment, right? If, if L is going first on the environment, then L will be able to execute because the it has its request. If R is going first, then R will be, be able to execute because it has its request. And if we look at the passive-passive synchronization primitive, it also doesn't deadlock here because L and I, L, I and RI will both go high at the same time, and then we can raise LO and RO. And so it doesn't deadlock with any of those uh, composition actions. So this is a parallel. And finally, we have uh, our last one, which is a mirror of the first, again, uh, do one and then do the other. And so this is just R semi L. And so finally, we get to kind of a more complex um, uh, composition of where one of the two channels is active and the other channel is passive. So in the first case, we have we we try to do you know do one and then do the other. So we have uh, we raise the outgoing rail on L. We wait for both the incoming rails on L uh, on L and R, and then we raise the outgoing rail of R. Uh, the next composition is we start to interleave them a little bit, right? So we uh, raise the outgoing rail on L, we do uh, the set phase of R, and then we wait for the incoming rail on L. Uh, then we uh, kind of move that interleaving uh, down a little bit more, and we have, uh, we wait on the incoming rail on R, we do the set phase on L, and then we uh, raise the outgoing rail on R. And finally, we have, uh, you know, do one and then do the other, where we wait on the incoming rail on R, uh, raise both outgoing rails and then wait on the incoming rail on L. And so this gets a little bit more complicated, but we can use the same uh, reasoning to figure out kind of which composition operators each of these represents. And so on our first one, again, we, we very clearly have do one and then do the other. And so this is, um, you know, the set phase of L and then do the set phase on R. So this is very clearly a, a synchronization, or sorry, a, a sequencing composition, where we have L semi R. Then for the next one, we raise the outgoing rail on L, and then wait for the incoming rail on R. And so this is um, a little bit more complicated. So do we does this deadlock on L semi R on the other side? Right? So if we're waiting for L first, then we'll receive the uh, the request, and then we'll be able to send uh, li and start uh, and and then also send ri. So it doesn't deadlock with l semi r. Does this deadlock with r semi l? So if we are uh, if we send on ri first, right, if we raise ri, then uh, wait for ro. What will happen is this will drive LO high. Uh, it will successfully wait for RI. It'll, it'll find RI, and then it'll raise RO. And so it doesn't deadlock with R semi L. And so this is parallel. Uh, it deadlocks with neither environment. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what ordering uh, it has. Um, OK. And so then we look at the next one, and we have uh, wait on RI, execute LO, wait on LI, execute RO. And uh, so does this deadlock with uh, L semi R? It does, because we're waiting on RI and we'll never receive RI, where, whereas the environment is waiting on LI, LO and won't receive LO until after RI is raised. So this deadlocks on, R semi, on L semi R. Now, what about R semi L? Uh, if we raise RI, then this will be able to continue. Uh, <clears throat> we won't be able to get RO until we start to execute the communication action on L. And so this will deadlock on R semi L. 
And so this is the synchronization primitive, right? So uh, we compose these, it, we have to uh, have parallel on the environment. And this final one uh, is, is, again, pretty clearly do the set phase in R and then do the set phase in L. So it's do one and then do the other. And so this is, again, R sending to L. So now that we have these uh, composition operators on the set phase, on, on a given kind of two-phase uh, communication primitive, we can take these two two-phase communication primitives and compose them to make uh, their associated four-phase communication primitives. And so we have parallel, um, and in order for data to propagate out to the environment um, in parallel, what is the minimum kind of required constraint on the set and reset phase compositions? Well, we know that in any given protocol, the set phase of a, of a given channel must precede the, the reset phase of that channel. So there's, um, as a function of the protocol, the set phase and the reset phase must happen in sequence of the same channel. Uh, and so those are kind of built into the protocol. But this composition then dictates uh, the compositions between uh, two channels of the set phases of those channels and the reset phases of those channels. And so if you look at L parallel R, in order for data to be communicated out to the environment, then assuming data uh, is communicated in the set phase, parallel. Now, because the reset phase doesn't actually uh, initialize the, uh, the communication action and doesn't send data down, um, downstream, there's actually no constraint on the ordering of the reset phases for parallel composition of the four phase. So if we then look at sequential, in order for one to happen first before the other, uh, it's the same reasoning. Uh, the only constraint is on the set phase. And so the set phase of one channel must happen before the set phase of the other. But finally, we have this kind of extra operator, no slack sequential. And so this is a, uh, is a sequential uh, composition. However, it's a sequential composition that doesn't allow, that doesn't create any slack along the channel. And we will uh, talk about slack uh, more in depth in the next lecture. And so this no slack sequential operator is subtly different from the synchronization uh, primitive, you know, synchronization composition that we we're talking about in the two phase CHP. Um, whereas uh, the synchronization primitive required both uh, communication actions to happen simultaneously, this is still a sequential composition. And so uh, we still have our uh, kind of initial constraint of L semi R for this sequential, for this no slack sequential, but then we also add a constraint of R semi L for the reset phase coming on the other side. And so this prevents um, kind of any extra. Uh, communication actions on uh, R, sorry, on L before R has completed. So now we can kind of use this framework to figure out uh, for a given kind of uh, composition of two phase uh, uh, communication primitives, what that means in a four phase CHP context. And so this, for this first one, we have L prime, R prime, R prime, L, or sorry, L prime, R prime, R double prime, L double prime. And that, uh, if we look back at our constraints here, that cr clearly matches the no slack sequential because we have L prime, R prime, and then we have R double prime, L double prime in sequence, right? And so that's no slack sequential. For this next one, we have L prime, R prime, L double prime, R double prime. And so uh, we have now switched the reset phases, reset phase orderings. And so there's no, this is no longer a no slack sequential because we are, are no longer uh, follow this constraint here. However, we still ha are following this constraint with L prime, R prime on this side. And so this is very clearly a sequential composition, L semi R. 
Uh, and then this third one we have, or uh, sorry, um, because of um, because R must wait for L uh, before continuing, this is also known as a half buffer. Uh, and we'll get into uh, buffering and Slack in the next lecture. And so this next one, we have L prime, L double prime, R prime, R double prime. And we're still following the relationship here that uh, the constraint that we need for sequential, right? Because we, uh, we can only execute R prime after L prime has, has already executed. And we've got this L double prime in between, but the, the relationship still holds. And so this is once again a sequential operator, uh, but this is full buffering because uh, L does not need to wait for R in order to reset. So how about these? Uh, we have L prime and R prime in parallel, followed by L double prime, followed by R double prime. And so if we go back and look at our constraints, this matches the parallel composition operator because we have L prime and R prime in parallel. So this is a parallel composition. Uh, if we look at the next one here, we've got L prime and R prime in parallel followed by L double prime, R double prime in parallel. So once again, uh, because the set phases of the two-phase communication actions in R and L are in parallel, this is a parallel composition operation. Finally, we have L prime followed by R prime, uh, followed by the reset phases in parallel. And so this follows our constraint for uh, sequencing. Uh, so this is a, uh, a uh, sequencing composition operator. So this is semi. And once again, this is a half buffer because L must wait for R prime before uh, continuing and resetting its channel. Okay, two more. We have L prime and L double prime in sequence uh, alongside R prime, R double prime in sequence. And so once again, because L prime and R prime are able to execute in parallel, this is a parallel composition operator. Then we have L prime and R prime in parallel. We've got this kind of non-properly nested composition here where R double prime must wait for L prime, but L double prime doesn't have to wait for R prime. And so this is um, also a parallel composition because L, the set phases of L and R can happen in parallel. However, we've got this kind of non-proper nesting, which you can't really represent in CHP without an extra variable, without an extra synchronization between the two uh, branches of the parallel. And so this extra variable that we've added in, we have to make sure that we reset it properly later in the handshake. OK, so we have three more. Uh, this first one, we have L prime and R prime in parallel. Uh, but then L is allowed to, L double prime is allowed to execute after L. Um, and R double prime must wait for uh, everything. And so this is once again a parallel composition because L prime and R prime are allowed to execute in parallel. Then for this next one, we have L prime uh, followed by L double, you know, the reset phase of L in parallel with uh, the entire communication on R. And so uh, now we have, we're implementing the sequencing constraint between L prime and R prime. So this is uh, a sequencing composition. Uh, and because uh, L double prime does not need to wait for R prime uh, before executing, this is a full buffer. Finally, we have uh, L prime, uh, and then we execute L double prime in parallel with R prime. Uh, followed by R double prime. And so uh, we have this uh, kind of sequential composition between L prime and R prime. And so this is a uh, sequential composition operator in the four phase CHP. And further, because L double prime does not need to wait for R prime before continuing, this is a, also a full buffer. And so food for thought is 
how many different possible implementations are there of kind of the simple buffer that we've been talking about so far. Um, and it turns out uh, that there are uh, kind of a reasonable number, and only about three are really useful. The weak condition half buffer, which we have talked about pretty thoroughly throughout this course, the pre-charge half buffer, uh, which, which we've talked about a little bit, and the pre-charge full buffer, which uh, we haven't covered so far. Let's get into some examples. We're in lecture 13, and we are just going to go over this first example here, e1.chp. So in this example, our goal is to write out the communicating hardware process description for a one-bit half adder. And then we are going to expand that into HSE and reshuffle to optimize circuit area. Uh, and we'll be reshuffling that into uh, either a pre-charge half buffer or a weak condition half buffer. So first, uh, a one-bit half adder has four channels, two inputs, A and B, and two outputs. S and C O. And so we need to uh, create kind of our main loop. And then we need to receive uh, both inputs. So uh, receive on A and then receive on B in parallel uh, at minimum. Uh, and then once we have our two inputs, we can compute uh, the, the thing that we're going to send on S and C O. So we've got uh, we create some kind of internal variable. We've got s, and we set that to the XOR of a and b, kind of following a, a standard half adder implementation. And then the carry out is going to be the majority of a and b. And then finally, we need to send those values on our output channel. So we take our channel s, and we send uh, the value that we've computed for it. And we check our channel CO, and we send the value that we've computed for it. Uh, and that completes our CHP description of the half adder. And so we can take this CHP description, and we can kind of break it out into HSC. And there are two ways to look at this. The first is kind of what is the uh, least constrained version of this, the one that implements the, the the most parallelism, and then what is the most constrained version of this that implements the least parallelism? Uh, so let's simplify this a little bit first. So we can take our uh, internal variables, and rather than creating internal variables on which to communicate, we can uh, do the computation just right, right before we send on a channel. So we can rewrite this as A receive on A, in parallel with B receive on B, then send on S the XOR of the two, and in parallel, send on CO the majority of the two. OK. So let's expand this into the most parallel uh, uh, implementation. And so we have our uh, receive on A and our, on our receive on B. And so let's uh, turn that into kind of two-phase communication actions. So our receive on A is A receive uh, on the set phase and we're going to receive data, uh, followed by A receive the reset phase. And we're going to be doing that in parallel with B receive in the set phase uh, and receive the data B, and then B receive in the reset phase. And so this is kind of that first uh, half of the CHP here. We're receiving our inputs. In the second half, we are going to be uh, first, uh, kind of sending on S, and that's going to be the set phase of, and we're going to be sending A, X, or B, followed by the reset phase, so S, send, reset phase. And we're going to do that in parallel with our set phase on the send of CO, uh, and we're going to send the majority, um, followed by the reset phase on the send of CO. Okay. And then we've got this kind of sequential operator that we need to figure out, right? And so kind of following our rules about what 
uh, kind of sequential composition means, um, this must happen, right? So the send on S, the set phase of the send on S must happen after the set phase of the receive on A and the set phase of the receive on B at minimum, right? Following our uh, ordering constraints that we talked about in lecture. And the set phase on the send on CO must happen after the set phase of the receive on A and the set phase of the receive on B at minimum. And so if we were to make the most most parallel version of this, then what we would do is we'd look at um, kind of these two semicolons, these two places uh, in the communication action. And we would uh, figure out a way to kind of sequence from there. So if we start from here and we start, and we were to make a kind of non-properly nested version of this, we'd, we'd go from those two spots, um, assuming that they have both completed, and we would uh, go straight to this spot right here, right? So right at the beginning uh, of the send on A and uh, on S and CO. And so that's kind of the most parallel uh, version that we can implement. Um, however, it is not easily represented in CHP. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is think about kind of the least parallel, the most constrained version of this that is uh, valid, uh, a valid representation of this CHP that we've written. And so we can do, uh, we, we still have our uh, kind of uh, set and reset phase definitions here that we've talked about. Uh, and let me clean this up a little bit. So. Here's that sequencing operator. And, uh, and here is our compositions. And so we can uh, actually take this and kind of interleave this a bit. And so we can take these reset phases on A and B, and we can pull them out of the parallel statement. So we, then we can do the reset phases on A and B in parallel. Uh, and then we can do the set phases on A and B in parallel. OK, and then we can do the same thing, right? So this is still a parallel composition in the four phase CHP because the set phases of A and B are both happening in parallel with respect to each other. Um, so this is still a valid implementation of uh, this parallel uh, composition that we see in the four phase CHP. Uh, we can do the same transformation for S and CO. So let's do that. So we, we take uh, the reset phases of S and CO, and we do those in parallel. We pull them out of the parallel block here, and we do the set phases of S and CO in parallel. And once again, this is still a valid implementation of the uh, parallel composition operator here. And so next, we need to uh, do the uh, sequence, you know, sequencing composition operator. Um, and so the only constraint here is that uh, a and B in the set phase happens before S and CO in the set phase. And so there's no particular constraint on the reset phases here. So we can kind of rewrite this, interleaving uh, these four phase communication actions. So we can take this, uh, the, the set phases on S and CO, and we can put it after the set phases on A and B. And so, um, now we've got our, you know, a valid reshuffling. And it turns out that this is uh, a WCHB reshuffling, right? Because we have our uh, set phase, receive on A, receive on B. We have our set phase, send on S, send on CO. We have our reset phase, receive on A, receive on B. And then we have our reset phase, send on S, send on CO. And so an alternative of this that adds a little bit more parallelism back is our PCHB reshuffling, which is, which simply just takes this semicolon and turns it into a parallel, right? And so we've got our receive on A, receive on B down here. We've got our send on A, uh, send on S, send on CO set phase. And then we execute all of the reset phases in parallel. That's our pre-charge half buffer. Um, 
And then if we were to modify this a bit, uh, then what would happen is we've got our pre-charge full buffer, PCFB, and that is simply uh, that simply allows the uh, reset phases of A and B to happen in parallel with the uh, set phases of S and CO. And so what we would do is we'd say, all right, S and CO, uh, and then we we execute S prime, uh, the reset phases of S and CO uh, in parallel with each other. Uh, and then we would take this A and B, and that would be in sequence with the whole uh, uh, communication on S and CO. So that adds, again, a little bit more parallelism back into this communication. Uh, in parallel. OK. So um, let me do this and this. So that uh, kind of concludes the example. We've, we've taken this, um, uh, this CHP up here. We've written out a CHP for a half adder. Then we've, we've turned it into three different possible uh, two-phase CHPs for um, for the the kind of main uh, buffer uh, classes, and so we can let's take our WCHB and let's turn it into handshaking expansions. Okay, so we have our set phase on A and our set phase on B. Let's turn let's expand those, and so we have our parallel block, right? And we're going to wait on uh, because the receives are passive. We have a couple of design decisions to make. So the uh, our, our receives on A are going to be passive, and they're going to be enable. It's going to be an enable channel. Our receive on B is going to be passive, and it's going to be an enable channel. Our send on S is going to be active, uh, and it's going to be an enable channel. And our send on CO is going to be uh, active and is going to be an enable channel. And then let's also uh, figure out the encoding. So let's uh, use a standard E1 of 2. Um, so this is a uh, one, you know, one hot encoding, one of two, uh, also called dual rail. And so we're going to use this across all of our channels. OK. And so for to expand our uh, set phase of A, we first wait for a.f, you know, the request on the false rail, and the uh, request on the true rail. And then when we uh, receive a request on the false rail, rail we, we save that into our variable. And we, when we receive a request on the true rail, we save that into our variable as well. And so that um, that's kind of the first step. The second step is to then lower the enable. So that's our set phase of A. And that happens in parallel with the set phase in B. And so the set phase in B looks very similar. We have we wait on B.F, we raise our uh, our internal variable B, and then we wait for B.T and we raise our internal variable B.T. And finally we lower B.E. And so that covers this uh, set phase of A and B. Uh, then we can uh, write out the set phase of S and CO. So let's do that. And so for S and CO, we need to send. And so we check the value of our internal variable if, uh, and we compute A, X, or B. So let's do the true side first, right? Um, so A, X, or B is A dot F and B dot T, or A dot T and B dot F, right? Basically, they disagree. So that sends true on the uh, S channel. And then for the for the false rails, we uh, an X, it's really an X nor, so they have to agree. So it'd be A dot F and B dot F or A dot T and B dot T. And so that sends false on the S channel. Uh, then we need to wait for the enable 
coming back from the environment. So we uh, wait for that to be lowered, and that completes our set phase on S. And in parallel, that happens with um, our set phase on CO. So let's compute the majority. Again, we're going to do the true side first, the true rail. And so <clears throat> the majority here is A dot T and B dot T, and that sets CO dot T high. And then um, for the uh, false side, we have A dot F or B dot F, if either is false, then we uh, raise the false rail. And finally, again, we have to wait for the output enable to go low. And so that's our set phase on S and CO. Uh, and so next, we can look at the reset phases of A and B and the reset phases of S and CO. So let's do that. The reset phase of A is we wait for the uh, incoming request on A to be neutral. So that would be A dot F is low and B dot and A dot T is low. Uh, then we need to raise the input enable, so A dot E goes high. And that is the reset phase of the receive on A. And so the reset phase of the receive on B looks very similar. We wait for its incoming uh, request to be neutral before raising the enable. Uh, so then we need to look at the reset phases of S and CO. And so uh, that is uh, largely we lower the outgoing requests in parallel. And so one of these two transitions will actually be vacuous because it will be already low. Uh, then we can wait for the incoming enable to be high. And so the reset phase of CO looks very similar, right? We lower the outgoing requests and then we wait for the incoming enable to be high. And so that concludes our expansion. Now we need to kind of reshuffle this a bit in order to get our uh, you know, typical WCHB that you're used to seeing. So again, um, because kind of because guards are not real transitions, um, it's like it's a wait. In order for uh, us to be able to get to the other side of this uh, parallel composition, uh, we will have had to wait for both s.e and co.e to go high. And so we can actually pull that guard out of the uh, parallel composition here and do it afterwards. Uh, at the same time. So we wait for both of them to go high before continuing on to the next operation. Right? And so now we can reset S and CO uh, totally in parallel. Right? Um, and then over here, we can, we can kind of do the same thing. Right? It's the same observation. In order to get past this, uh, this uh, parallel composition, we need to wait for both S and CO, uh, uh, both the enables to be low. Right, so uh, not s.e and not co.e. So that simplifies this a little bit. OK. Uh, then we can kind of we can look at simplifying uh, this again, right? So we have a.e goes low and, and b.e goes low. We can also pull that out of the parallel composition operator here. So we can we can uh, execute those in parallel, a.e goes low and b.e goes low, after we set the uh, internal variable values. And we can do the same thing down here. So we can pull this out of the parallel composition. So a.e goes high in parallel with b.e goes high. OK. Uh, so we have kind of. Uh, simplified this a little bit, and now we can clean up the syntax a bit to make it uh, easier to look at. So let's uh, turn this into an internal uh, parallel composition, uh, and then put this in straight line with the rest. And we can turn this into a single guard uh, all at once, and um, and so that can go straight line in with the rest of it. Uh, and then we can think about uh, ordering here. Right, so um, we don't have to use internal variables. We can actually take this enable on a.e and b.e and move this uh, to the other side. 
of this whole uh, set. Because ultimately, uh, the if we look at uh, the you know driving two different wires, driving transitions on two different wires, or in this case, four different wires, uh, the if there's nothing, if there's no uh, weight on the external environment to kind of determine ordering, then the external environment won't be able to tell the difference between uh, send on S, you know, uh, uh, sorry, won't be able to determine the difference between uh, raise the false rail on S followed by lower the enable rail on A versus lower the enable rail on A versus raise the false rail uh, followed by raise the false rail on S. And that's because one wire could be way longer than the other. And so it introduces any delay that the environment really doesn't know about. And so we can just swap these because we already know the values of a of our internal variable of a and b here. And we can do the same thing over here on this side with the when we raise the uh, and input enables. And so we can take this and again move it over after um, after our after we lower the output requests. Okay, that's a little simpler. Uh, then we can take this uh, this composition, and um, A and B are kind of internal variables. The, the environment really doesn't know about them, and so we don't actually need to uh, save the values, the input requests from A and B into internal variables. We can just use them directly to compute the the output request for S and T, and so that makes our lives a little bit simpler. A B. And so this whole thing at the beginning just goes away, right? And so we're, we're directly using the input requests to compute the output requests. And this, sh is, this sh should really start to look very similar to the WCHB reshuffling that we kind of are used to. So the final thing that we need to do is we need to take this weight on s.e and co.e, and we need to roll it around the loop. Now, because um, you know what happens first in a loop is really uh, the only difference between what happens first in a loop and what happens um, and what doesn't happen first is is reset, right? And so, if we assume that s dot e and co dot e are going to be high on reset, then we can move this weight uh, to the beginning of the loop, and we haven't actually changed the uh, the, the handshake reshuffling. Okay. And so now we have our uh, set phase on S and CO and A and B, followed by our reset phase on uh, S and CO and A and B. And this is a full weak condition half buffer reshuffling. Um, and you know, fall, you know, walking you through each step of the way uh, and each transformation that we made.